It's not your fault. Don't worry, it'll be alright. Don't worry, he will make your heavy light. Don't worry, don't worry, don't This love is always right on time. I've been trying to figure out my own way. Uh, trying to put it all on me. Uh, way down by the pressure. Without looking up, I know you see me. Cause on and on and on, you keep blessing me. But on and on and on, I keep worrying. Why I'm always running when you're telling me. You're telling me, don't worry. Just stay it down, it's not your fight. Don't worry, it'll be alright. Don't worry, it will make your happy life. Don't worry, don't worry, don't. This love is always right on time. Got the shoulders for the burdens I'm bearing Broke down and pulling over by the wayside Was never made for this type of way So I throw my hands up and my load gets lighter I throw my hands up and then burn like fire I float up to heaven like the smoke in the air I flip my worries in the prayer, leave them right there Don't worry, just stay it down, it's not your fight Don't worry, it'll be alright Don't worry, it will make your Seen God's eyes. Uh, if you can see him through God's eyes, uh, if you can only see him through God's eyes, yeah. I know you probably seen God's eyes. Uh, if you can see him through God's eyes, yeah. He's right on time, right on time. Just stay it down, it's not your fight. Don't worry, it'll be alright. God is king, we the soldiers. Hold your beam out the solar. When I get to heaven's gates, I ain't gotta peek over. Keeping perfect composure. When I scream at the chauffeur, I ain't mean I'm just focused. 
I ain't mean, I'm just focused. Put a lean out slower. Got us clean out of soda. Before the flood, people judge. They did the same thing to Noah. Everybody wanted Yandy. The Jesus Christ did the laundry. They say the week start on Monday, but the strong start on Sunday. Won't be in bondage to any man. John 8, 3, 3. We the descendants of Abraham. Yea, you should be made free. John 8, 3, 6. To whom the son said free. Is free indeed. He say the wretch like me. Don't wake up with Judas kiss and make up. Even with the bitter cup, forgave my brothers and drank up. Did everything but gave up. Stab my back, I can't front. Still we win, we prayed up. Even when we die, we raise up. Ain't no want, no we need it. The powers that beat have been greedy. We need ours by this evening. No white flag or no treaty. We got the product, we got the tools, we got the minds, we got the youth. We going wild, we on the loose. People is lying, we are the truth. Everything old should now become new. The least will be green, bearing the fruit. Love God and our neighbor as written in Luke. The army of God and we are the truth. <laughs> Good morning, North Park. I'm McGavick. And I'm Jeffrey. And we are so glad you connected with us online today. We love to connect at North Park, and it's super easy to do. You go to northparkrdu.com, find the connect button. It's a great way for us to share information and you to share some information with us. You know, we have a couple of new amazing life group members that have joined us over the past couple of months, and it's all because they did what, Jeff? They found the connect button. That's right. So if you're new or newish, please click that connect button and let's get to know you better. Also, right now, we're going to take two before we begin worship. So we do this all the time. Take two minutes, chat with the person you might be sitting with and watching church with, or jump online in the online chat or Facebook and discuss this. Standard time or daylight savings time? Do we need to have the difference, the spring forward, the fall back? Jeff says no. I love the longer days and shorter nights, but that means when you get up early, you gotta get up at like 3 a.m. So anyway, have a conversation. Let us know what you think. Should we just have standard time all the time or do you like the spring forward, fall back? And until we see you again, we love you. We love y'all.
Folks, we are so glad to have you today for our online worship experience. We are doing it. We are doing it today. So why don't you secure your Bible and also maybe a notebook, something to write with. Let's take some notes. Let's dive in together. Let's learn from God's word. Also, if you take your YouVersion Bible app on your smartphone, hit the menu button, go to events, type in North Park Church. All of today's scriptures and notes will be right there for you. We are continuing in our series, Christ in me.
Last week, we started a series called Christ in Me. We talked about the fact that Jesus really has made it simple for us, even though we make it way too complicated. But I get it. As we look at God's word, it can be overwhelming at times. There's so much here for us to read, to learn, for us to absorb, understand, apply, and then actually be able to share it. It's a lot. But I want to sum up this entire book for you in a couple of words. Are you ready? Write this down. Love God, love others. It really is that simple. If we can learn to apply those words, like just love God and love others, everything else will fall into place. But you will never love your neighbor as yourself until you first understand what it means to love Jesus. And you will not truly love him until you know him. And you will not know him until you walk with him. I love that verse of scripture that reminds us that he has come that we might have abundant life. What does that even mean? What does that look like? What does it mean to know him? What does it mean to love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength? I'm not sure if you feel this way, but getting to know somebody new is frustrating for me. I love people. I am a people person. And I think that's a pretty good thing. It'd be pretty bad if I was like, I love Jesus. I just don't really like people very much. It'd be kind of hard to be a good pastor, or even a good Christian, if you just don't like people. I mean, that's kind of Jesus' thing. We're supposed to be like him. And he said, love your neighbor as yourself. So loving others is a really big deal. But that first encounter that we have with someone new, let's just be real. It's hard. I mean, getting to know somebody when you first meet them can be extremely intimidating and scary for people like me who even are like people, people. I would go with my wife to her company events and, and I would walk around in her shadow and kind of play the part of the trophy husband. Um, if she were here, you would literally be able to hear her eyes roll as I say those words. I'm usually good out of the gate. And if they are a talker, then I'm gold. Like if they'll give me something, if they'll engage in this conversation, I'm good to go. But if they aren't so much of a talker, man, it's so hard. Hey, how are you? I'm Anthony. What's your name? How long have you been with the company? I, I'm, I'm Mary Ann's husband. Do you have kids? Do you like dogs? Do you have a gun? Can you shoot me? Like, I just want out of this conversation. Just Jesus, just rapture now. Like these conversations are so awkward at times. And going to that next level in a relationship can be very difficult. Turning that corner and actually having a meaningful conversation with a stranger, it's very difficult. It can be very awkward. We have our typical conversation points that we share in an effort to introduce ourselves to people. Like we all have our go-tos. Like I might say, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I, I, I have a dog, I, I like to play golf. Not very well, but I enjoy playing. I was in the marching band. I won the John Philip Sousa Band Award in high school. Like that doesn't impress many people, but I always lead with that. I don't know why, I'm kind of proud of that. But Marianne would always say, whatever you do, Honey, don't tell them you're a pastor. Don't tell them you're a pastor. Why? Because it always changes the conversation. And people always treat me differently or us differently when we say that. So we absolutely hate that. We like to get to know people and who they are before we tell them what we do, right? Uh, we were on a comedy bus tour when we were uh, traveling. And the tour guide was a comedian who pretty much picked on everybody all day. That was his thing. And everyone with me was like, dude, whatever you do when we get on this bus, please do not tell this guy that you're a pastor. First question out of the gate, and we had not even left the parking lot yet. Hey, what do you do? I danced around it, y'all. I really did. This was my answer. I said, I'm a motivational speaker. He lit up. He was like, oh man, that's awesome. What's your spiel? Like, what do you talk about? How do you, mo how do you motivate people? Uh, do you want to give us a little motivational talk? I froze. I panicked. And I said, I'm actually a pastor. And he looked at me and said, you just made this the easiest day of my life. He picked on me the rest of the day. The Bible gives us great information about how we can know Jesus. The Bible tells us that he is El Shaddai 
which means Lord God Almighty. The Bible says that he is El Elyon, the most high God. The Bible calls him Adonai, which means master. Yahweh, which means Jehovah. Jehovah Nissi, which means the Lord my banner. Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. Jehovah Sitkanu, the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Mekadishkin, the Lord who sanctifies you. El Olam, the everlasting God. My favorite, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is my peace. I really encourage you to incorporate these names as a part of your prayer life. It, it may sound something like this as you pray, just being very practical with you today. Lord, I come before you and I worship you. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord that heals. What a powerful thing to add to your prayer as you adore him, you worship him, and you recognize who he is in your life. You are Jehovah Shalom. God, you are my peace. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are a God who always provides. I say often, he is as close as the mention of his name. And if he feels distant from you, then just speak those names, call on his name. And all of a sudden, his presence becomes so real and so strong and so close to you. I remember as a college student, a friend of mine and I were driving back from an event. We had a few minutes of drive time where we had parked our cars at the church that we served at. And we started just throwing out as many names of God as we could. And we started out with this running list of names that we could remember. And all of a sudden, it became one of the most powerful evenings of worship that I've ever experienced. You could just sense the presence of God in that car as we called upon his name. He is as close as the mention of his name. We went in that church and we just fell down at that altar. And I remember weeping and having this incredible experience with the Lord. Why? Because he is the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth and the life, the true vine, the great I am. I mean, those are all things that Jesus said about himself. And as we just called upon his name, I'll never forget the power in those moments. Literally just on my knees, not in a crowd of people, but just with a friend calling on the name of Jesus and experiencing his power like never before. I believe that Jesus is inviting us to know him in a way that some of us have never known him. And in a season that has been marked with isolation and distance, we are desperate for intimacy and closeness. And I believe that Jesus, through the power of his Holy Spirit, wants us to know him that way. So over these next few weeks, we're going to dive into the deeper meaning of those names that Jesus uses to describe himself. I mean, there's a part of his character that he invites us to know and experience. And so today, let's start in John 6, 35. And this is what Bible says. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now, let's not take this out of context. Let's dive deeper and see what's happening here. The day before this experience, before Jesus spoke those words, Jesus had fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. That evening is also when Jesus walked on water. It was a big day. It was like a highlight reel for Jesus on that day. And then the next day, Jesus is teaching the people. And honestly, I think they just wanted to see more miracles. They wanted to see the excitement of things that was happening as Jesus was teaching. They wanted to see the miraculous sign. In fact, this is what they said. If you want us to believe in you, show us a miraculous sign. They just wanted him to give them bread like Moses had done for their ancestors. This is what they said. Moses gave our ancestors bread from heaven to eat. And when they said that, Jesus' tone changes a little bit as you read the scripture. Jesus got a little snappy. He actually said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. He was talking about himself. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. 
And Jesus explains to them that anyone who comes from him, from the Father, that is, receives from him, believes in him, will find spiritual hunger satisfied and no one else but Jesus. We have way too many people on a low-carb spiritual diet. I don't know that there's any worse diet than a low-carb diet. I love bread. But there's some of us on a low spiritual carb diet trying to live our life without the spiritual bread of life, trying to do this on our own, do it in our own strength, trying to live our life without Jesus outside of his authority, not looking to God's word for wisdom and application, but doing our own thing. And as we look at the crowds of people who surrounded Jesus that day, it looks very similar to what I see today. As we look at the crowds of people who surrounded Jesus that day, that crowd looks very similar to what I see today. Let's look at how. Here's the first thing. Those people were hungry. They were hungry. Hunger is something that God has built into the human body that reminds us to eat, that we need nourishment. I personally think when he built me, he added a little extra hunger because I feel like I'm always hungry. I heard my dad say one time, I'm actually never hungry. I always eat before I get there. Maybe you feel that way too. But we have this deep spiritual hunger that God created in the human heart that can never be satisfied with anything other than God himself and the gifts of grace that he shares with us. So there's this spiritual hunger in your life, but are you feeling that hunger with spiritual things or trying to fill that with other things? Here's the second thing. That crowd, they were seekers. There's a lot of seekers in our world today. During the first year of Jesus's ministry before his, this official opposition began to Jesus, Jesus was immensely popular and there were crowds of people who followed him. But there is a big difference in following Jesus and living for Jesus. Are you just following? Are you living for him, right? The crowds didn't impress Jesus. And he never catered to them because he knew the human heart. And he wasn't just looking people who would follow along, but he wanted people who would make a decision to invite just this personal relationship, right? Anybody can join a crowd and go with the flow, but it takes courage to stand alone, stand for truth, and actually obey it. Anybody can show up to church. Anybody can put on a Christian t-shirt. But it takes courage to read his word, study it, and apply it. And like people today, they ask questions, but they rejected the Lord's answer. I'm constantly aware of more and more people who are calling themselves followers of Jesus. But they're rejecting the Bible as their blueprint for living. What is your relationship with God's word? I wanna be very clear today about where I personally stand and where we stand as a church. This is important, so I encourage you to lean in today. It's a core value of our church. We believe in the Bible as God's only inspired, inerrant, and authoritative revelation of himself to man in written form. This is God's written word to the world, but it is his living word to us. And everything that you need in order to be this lifelong follower of Jesus who, who knows him intimately, we find it in the Bible. But unfortunately, so many people reject God's word. And in doing so, they reject Jesus. And they still reject him today because the third thing, they were spiritually blind. Those crowds of people that were following Jesus, so many of them were spiritually blind. And as I look at our world today, it is an epidemic. There is spiritual blindness. So many people think that their salvation is in good works or their ability to be a good person or that they are their own savior or they can open God's word and take bits and pieces of it almost like it's a buffet to fit their taste and their needs. Salvation is a gift from God in response to faith and his word is our blueprint for living, all of it. But here's the fourth thing. They wanted immediate relief from their trouble with no cost to themselves. Jesus did say 
I am the bread of life. Here's what he didn't say. I'll be whatever you want me to be. We have to accept Jesus as he is and not receive him in bits and pieces. If we don't accept him as he is, we don't receive him at all. Like, what does God's word say? Let's apply his word. Let's discover the God of the Bible. But here's the fifth thing. They wanted to do something rather than believe in Jesus. Let me be clear. You can't earn it. It's about a relationship with him. It's about accepting and receiving the love that Jesus offers to us. And he does love you. He loves you more than you could ever understand. He loves you more than you could ever grasp. Maverick City Music and Elevation has released a collaborative project. And one of their songs that they've released have, has been really powerful for me in this season. It's called Jaira. I want you to listen to the words of the first verse. They're powerful words. Lean in. Listen to this. This is so good. This is what the words say. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. I wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing that I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. I know sometimes we have very distorted views of what love is. We have very distorted views about who fathers are. You have a heavenly father who loves you so much no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter how far you've run, you are never more loved than you are right now in the middle of your junk. We live in a world filled with hungry people who are searching for fulfillment and just can't find it. We're spending our money and on our time on so many different things, but never finding satisfaction. Fulfillment, peace, love, joy, satisfaction. All those things that you desperately want is found in Jesus and when it comes to making a decision about Jesus, we really have two choices. We can believe in him and be saved. Or we can reject him and pretend that everything is okay. And if we're honest, some of us have been pretending for way too long. We've been pretending that everything is okay. When it is not, we are far from okay. And what we need is to wave that white flag and surrender, surrender to Jesus and allow him to be Lord of our lives. But if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. So stop where you are, stop running and accept the invitation that he offers to you through his word, through the power of his Holy Spirit. And allow him to quench your spiritual hunger. Only he can do that. Because only he is the bread of life. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this incredible reminder today of who you are, who you want to be in our life. God, this deep hunger, this emptiness that we have in our life, only you can feel because only you are the bread of life. So Lord, I pray that right where we are in the privacy of our devotion that we would just simply say, Lord Jesus, I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. I want to know you. I don't want to just know about you. I want to know you. I want to walk with you. I don't want to just take bits and pieces of your word, but Lord, I want to truly recognize who you are in scripture and understand that this is the living word of the living God. And Lord, I pray that we would read it, that we would study it, and that we would apply it, and that we would share it. God, and we'd be so quick to praise you. God, give us strength to live this life for you. God, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that invites us into this relationship. And I pray like never before that we would experience a move of your Spirit in our life. And Lord, we're gonna, be give, you, we're gonna give you all the praise. We're going to give you the honor and the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. 
You know, the only way to really get God's word on the inside of you is to get in God's word. And we wanna help you on that journey. In fact, we invite you to, to go to northparkrdu.com and just click that grow button. We have life groups, which is a wonderful place where you can get to know people and dive into scripture together. We are convinced at North Park that life change happens in the context of meaningful relationships. And we would love to join you on this journey as you walk with Jesus. And so would you hit that button on that website? We would love to learn more about you. In fact, there's a digital connect card there. And we want to help you figure out what your next step is and walk this journey with you as the Holy Spirit gives you courage to take that next step. Don't live in isolation. This has been a very isolating season. But let's put an end to that isolation. And let's reach out. Let's reach out to Jesus. Let's reach out to some other people. And let's walk this journey together where we can experience life change together. There's also a place for you to request prayer. Maybe you have a need in your life that you want somebody to pray with you about. Doesn't matter what it is. We'd love to pray with you because we believe that bold prayer honors God and God honors bold prayer. And so we hope that you'll reach out because you matter to God and you matter to us and we are with you every step of the way.